You can make it. This trial you go in through. God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. You can make it. You can make it somehow. You can make it. This trial you go in through. God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God will let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. You can make it. I was in Houston. Texas, and I realized without a doubt that uh, my life has had gone, come apart. Marriage, everything had come apart. A friend of mine, Alton Garrison, who's a fabulous musician, lifetime friend. He's a great leader in the Assemblies of God. And he was sitting on the sofa, and I was sitting at my white piano. He looked at me, he says, you can make it, Mike, you can make it. And I was sitting at the piano, and I went to the end of this song. You can make it. Singing to myself, really. You can make it. This trial you go in through. God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. You can make it. Several years later, a couple of years or Jim Baker called me and he says, I want Tammy to make a whole album of Mike Murdoch's song. And we're going to name it, You Can Make It. And everywhere I went in the world, I saw bumper stickers. You can make it. PTL, Praise the Lord program. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. Self-talk is the seed for new inspiration. You talk to yourself. The King James Version of the Bible references David's experiences that he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. You can make it. You gotta. You're gonna. You will. You can make it. This trial you're going through, God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. Oh, you can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God's not going to let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. Can make it. I wrote another one. You can make it one more mile. You can make it one more mile. And you're going to. Somehow, you're going to make it one more mile. You're going to make it one more mile. You can make it one more mile. 
Sometimes you don't want to make it. Sometimes you'd rather leave. Felt that way a lot. Sometimes you want to leave. Sometimes you want to leave. You don't want the life to continue. Somebody says, I've had people say, you can have a long, long life. I say, I don't want a long life if it's like this one right now. I want to be well. I want to be well. I want to be right. I want to be whole. Welcome to our prayer world, our time together to pray. Father, in your presence, we change. In your presence, our focus is corrected. And you said we come into your presence singing. That's why I do it. I don't sing because I've written a lot of songs. I sing because you put a picture in my mind. You put a vision in my heart. And you've put me in the middle of a small circle of Pursuers, intercessors, reachers, lovers of wisdom. Lovers of wisdom more than even lovers of pleasure of the earth. We love learning. Father, I love the love circle. The love circle around me is a learning circle like me. We love to learn the laws of God, the cautions of life, and how to correct our mind and our focus. Thank you today for this time with my family. Thank you for this time with my family. Live today here from my home, we honor you. In Jesus' name. Brazil is here today. Canada. Nigeria, Uganda, Renee Poole, one of my best experiences in life is Miss Renee. Father, please heal her daughter swiftly. Give her a testimony beyond anything they dreamed of. You've put wise doctors around her. You've put a medical team beside her. And we know that you heal through doctors. You heal through music. You heal through words. I ask you to bring total healing. And Lord, Renee has been a faithful tither to the kingdom. She's got every right in the world to expect an uncommon harvest. Accelerate the harvest. Accelerate the harvest in Jesus' name. Clovia is here. Andrew says, thank you, thank you for your call. Thank you for praying for me. You're a wonderful blessing. Andrew says, S-A-S-S. -S -S. Those are good words, Andrew. Andrew, I felt so strong today about praying that the Lord would block any wrong decision so you have no fear. Andrew, I got that from my mother who said when you're, you would rather have the will of God than your own. Now Psalms 8411 says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Well, see, I can choose something good. I've got testimonies about that. But today I felt the Lord would literally shield you and protect you. Yea, Mark Mays, Celise, my precious niece. We have loved the baby daughter of my oldest sister for a long time. She has a laugh and a joy that you've never seen like she will. Celise, you've walked through the fire. You've walked through a thousand struggles, but you've kept your eyes on the Lord. I love that niece. I value that very much. Donna, Evangelist Julius, Zachary, 
Zachary Shaw says, I can receive this. We're going to make it. One more mile. I refuse to give up. Zachary, we won't. We won't. We're on a bridge. We're not in a world. We're on a bridge to another place. LaVon Hawkins says, I love your shirt. LaVon had just arrived today from Prophet Joshua Holmes. He sent me 15 of the most gorgeous shirts you've ever seen in your life. If I ever had a, a son who loved me, I value that. Yeah, I like this. I, it just arrived today, so I had to show it off. Thanks. Paul Belcher. Thank you, Paul. Baruch Vera. Juarez Chihuahua. Enja. Shock. Glad you got my phone call. I was a little late, but I'm, I was determined that you'd get it. And I really feel pro strong, Jacques, about the praying. When I pray, I feel I'm thoughtful in my praying. A lot of people just praise, but I got a lot on my mind when I talk to the Father. I want him to hear exactly what I say. I really do. Precision affects your faith, as you know. The more specific you are, your faith is affected, seems like to me. Karen Renee, Dale Jordan. Dale, I love looking at your countenance. You have one of the kindest faces on earth. Dale's been with me for years. Great man of God. He says, we thank you for the uncommon favor shown to us on Tuesday of this week. Dale, it meant the world to me y'all would come to the Wisdom Center and walk around praying in the Spirit. That meant the world to me. Don Nicholas. Yay. Don's watched me on YouTube. i got to get more understanding of YouTube. I don't know a whole lot about YouTube, but I need to learn. It's one of the things uh, Carlos could teach me that too. You want to make a note of that? Deborah Hooks from Michigan. James. Don Gatlin. Oh, Don. What a man of God. Don, is your son still... Pa Don, is your son still pastoring your church there? Would you mind sending me any information to his phone number or something? I, I'd like to to love on him a little bit, if you could. Don Gatlin, quote, sure love this time. I get to spend with you. I need the uplift you bring to my spirit. Priscilla, Lake City, South Carolina. Delicia, Delicia Edmondson, she writes me encouragement. She lifts me. Sheila Parson, I quote, I prayed for you for four hours. Unquote, I love you. Sheila, I love you too. Oh, I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Doris says, I feel blessed to hear you at all times. Bishop T.C. McIntyre, a man that I've preached for years ago. The book, Jesus Was a Double Diamond, The Leadership Secret of Jesus. I started teaching in his church on a Thursday night. I don't know if you remember that, Bishop McIntyre, but uh, I started teaching at 7.30, and I taught all night to about 8 o'clock the next morning. Taught 12 hours in his church because there was such an anointing. I, I stay in a river. If I'm in a river and God's revealing things, I stay there. I don't, I don't have 22-minute sermons. I should, but I don't. Bishop McIntyre. Oh, Jackie, write that down. I was supposed to go see Jackie Holton today. What a woman of God. Natalie for Israel says, thank you for calling me. I really needed that prayer, unquote. Julia Kendrick, 
quote, thanks for the phone call, Dr. Murdoch. Busy day. Probably would not have made it here without the phone call of encouragement. I understand that, Julia, very well. Pastor Ken Laurie, he said, I turned up the prayer burners for you. Needed, needed. Paul Chadwick says, quote, I'm with you again, Dr. Mike. Still in Florida, visiting my mother's sister. Evangelist Julius, last name O-M-O-R-O-G-B-E, I'm a Nigerian based in Spain. Happy to hear and learn from your papa. I love those words, Julius. Didn't know you were Nigerian. I should have guessed from the name, shouldn't I? I hadn't preached in Spain in years. Wow. Yay, first last. Little Rock too. you got that message, yay. I call a small circle of my partners in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm on VTN every Friday night. You that's in Little Rock, tomorrow night I'll be 7 o'clock on VTN. Happy Caldwell's phenomenal TV station. Means the world to me. Ron Thornton. Jill Rhodes, yay. She said, I'm working right now, but I'll watch the re-air. Thank you, Jill. Teresa Taylor. Got two gifts I want to send to you tonight. And I want to tell you a little story shortly. But uh, stay with me for a little bit, if you could. Uh, the Wisdom Commentary, Volume 3. Hardback. And it's... Uh, don't know what number it is, but it's my gift to anyone who sows a $58 seed or more, $58 more, and I'll tell you about that in a few moments. The Wisdom Commentary, I'm going to be teaching from it. And then I want to tell you about Volume 3 that just came, 50 wisdom, schools of wisdom sessions I've had around the world, 50 of them. This is my seed for any seed gift of $200 or more to our ministry. It's volume three, School of Wisdom, number three, and I'll tell you the 50 titles in a moment. Let me talk to you about just wisdom commentary. What are the most important things in the world? Everything doesn't have the same value. If a doctor says, Brother Mike, I've got to cut off something. I've got to, it could be your hair, it can be your ear, or it can be your right leg. I would go with the hair first, maybe the ear second, but I wouldn't want my leg cut off. Everything has a different value. Every friendship has a different value. Everybody's not the same. Every friendship's not the same. Every day is not the same. Some days have an opportunity that another day doesn't have. That's the first thing I want you to see, is that there is a variation of value. I can have one conversation. There's a joke, laugh, whatever. It's okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 2. I can have a conversation with someone else. It's number 5. A conversation with Oral Roberts was a number 10 on a 10 scale. Wisdom is recognition of difference. It decides what you say, what you do, who reacts to you, who stops their plans for you. Example. Blind man. Jesus is walking through the city of Jerusalem, I think it was, and suddenly a blind man screams out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible said Jesus stood still. 
But the people around him screamed back at him to shut up and be quiet. And notice his call for help activated adversaries, agitations, but the same call that upset the people circle around him stopped God, Jesus, in the flesh. Stopped him immediately. And the Bible said Jesus stood still. And he called for him. Bring him here. The same thing inside you that makes somebody upset with you and cause God to react to you and respond to you. This is an important breakthrough in your thinking. Because we avoid many things to avoid conflict. We avoid many things to keep the environment at peace when what we want and need is the reaction of God might be something we need to do. That's important. That's very important for you to grasp. Every friendship is not the same. Every relationship is not the same investment. Some relationships require little and produce much. Some relationships require all of you and produce almost nothing. Some relationships require your energy, your total focus, your attention, your time. Other relationships simply require moments of honor. Some relationships only require the sensation of believable love. It's big to me. I have a difficult time believing in people's love. Very difficult because of the collection of memories of disappointment. Painful people can last a lifetime in your memory if you're not careful. It takes a whole lot to overcome that. Some of you are good at it. Lately, I haven't been good at that. I have been my whole lifetime, but about, the, I'd say the last year, maybe two years, I've had a difficult time overcoming overcoming the odor the emotional odor of unbelievable love. Every relationship has a different contribution and requires a different investment from you. I looked at a note that came to me today. And in the note was an offering to me someone I really, I believe, loves me. A young preacher. And as I looked at his note, and I looked at his offering, I looked at my wife, Christine, and I said, I believe his, his love is believable. It's believable. I said, he's consistent. He never asked me for anything, and he's continuously sowing into my life. It's very powerful, very powerful. He's consistent. He's not up and down. One day telling you he loves you, and a month later he's mad at you for something you said. But that's an emphasis I want to make. Everybody on the earth is different. Different mood, different 
temperament. There's a book on the five love languages, the five languages of love. I think the guy is Gary Chapman or something. I'm not sure. But it's a, it's a book worth reading. Some people use words to communicate love. Others use acts of service, acts of service to show you that they love. There's five different languages of love, and I've never studied it long, but I had all my staff take it because everybody has a different love language, the way they express their love. And there's a way that we want love expressed to us. I had a young man that traveled with me a lot. And every time he left me, he'd cross his arms like this. I love you. He'd cross his arms. And I love that. And later he split some of the people of the Wisdom Center and started a church down the road. And I realized that was his way of saying I love you. To me, loyalty is a way of proving love, you know. But he had a different love language. To him, it was, and I really like that. I like when people do that. But he doesn't always communicate love. The man who built the Wisdom Center was talking to me today. He's really helping me in our move from the Wisdom Center to our new offices. By the way, thank you, thank you, thank you, Founder Circle. We've asked the Lord for 25 who can sow a $1,000 seed to pay for the first three months of our new offices. And I think we've got about, I think 12 or 15 toward the 25. And I want to say thank you. Your name's going to be on a plaque. I really wish I had your picture also. Our new offices, and it's called the Founder Circle. Let me just stop for a moment and pray for you. Father, we ask you for 25 who would sow a $1,000 seed during the month of May to accommodate the needs of the, our new people, our landlords, for our new offices. I ask you within 30 days, Turn this $1,000 seed three times over. I ask you to triple it back as a harvest. Do it in surprise ways so they'll never forget it. I thank you for the 25. Some will sow it in the coming days. Some have already planted the $1,000 seed. Thank you, thank you from my heart, Lord. Honor them in Jesus' name. Amen. Every Friendship, every relationship requires a different investment. Some relationships are too costly. They take away from your focus, your time, even your health. I signed a partner letter one time and says, always your friend. I thought that was a good statement. Always your friend, Mike Murdoch. And the lady wrote me back and says, we're not friends. She was a partner. We're not friends. She says, friends go on vacations together. Friends take walks together. And I looked, I said, okay. Her idea of a friendship was a little different. Maybe I misunderstood. I wrote her back, I says, I'm so sorry, I guess we're not, because I don't really go walks with anybody, and I don't go on vacations, so maybe we're not. Here's some wisdom keys. Identify the expectations of every friend, whatever friend has of you. What do they expect from you? What do they want from you? What do they need from you, and what are you able to give them? Now, I've shared with you that questions are the most important thing on the earth, next to prayer, I suppose. But even in prayer, 
you need to ask questions. Holy Spirit, what do you expect from me? Holy Spirit, what would you desire from me? I've been asking the Lord to identify to me the Elishas, the circle of those who never want to leave. That's incredibly important. A preacher of 10,000 people, Lagos, fabulous man of God, built a great work, flew all the way from Lagos, Nigeria, walked in my boardroom and says, Dr. Murdoch, I only came here for one reason. I flew here for this. How will I know the Elisha, my successor? How will I know my successor? And I said, that's the one that never leaves your side, the one that wants your presence. The one that follows your instructions explicitly. The one who loves your protocols, loves your standard. Not one trying to change you, but one who loves who you are and considers you the highest quality human in their life. We all have people who care. We all have people who learn from us, there's something different about some people. That's the thing to look for. Study difference. Search for this. I, I listen for four things in every conversation. I listen for four things. The first thing I listen for is the sound of pain. Because I belong around somebody wounded. My calling is to bring healing, hope, restoration. My calling is to correct focus. My calling is to uncover the secrets of God for hope, for recovery, for correct focus. That's my anointing. That's what I'm here for. I belong around somebody who has a problem. Illustration, I was spending Christmas with the Oral Roberts family. They would bought me some beautiful Louis Vuitton luggage that I'd never heard of Louis Vuitton. They had bought me some beautiful luggage, and Richard came in the kitchen. I can still see him. He said, Daddy said he wants to spend the day with you. He wants to talk to you today. So I went in there, and Brother Oral Roberts was rocking in his rocking chair. And it was Christmas. We were in Palm Springs in their home in Palm Springs. He always had a legal pad. He always kept a legal pad in his hand, on his knee when I talked. This is what he said. Brother Mike, talk to me. Brother Mike, talk to me. I said, what about, Brother brother Roberts, what about? And this is his reply. It's the highest moment of my lifetime, probably, for more kind words. He said, anything, Brother Mike. He said, when you talk to me, he said, every time you talk to me, I always know it's something God would say. I didn't hardly know where to start. My first thought was, oh, Lord, wake up the Solomon page in me. If there's any, if there's any wisdom in me, wake it up, Lord. Give me something good to say. This is the greatest preacher ever walked on the earth. The number one healing ministry in 2,000 years, and he wants me to talk to him. What do I say? It's a struggle for me to get out a newsletter. And he wants me to talk to him. Then in a few minutes, he told me his greatest concern, what was really worrying him. And he didn't know how to 
what to say and do about it. Well, I have an opinion about everything, so I spit it out. He took notes, and in 30 days he had done what I suggested he do. Some friends value your words. Some value your time. Some admire your achievements. You must study friendships. Because if you're not careful, you will spend all your time with the wrong one, the wrong one who wants your attention, not your wisdom. I have friends that want me to listen to them. And I can and I do. But the moment that I bring up a problem I have, I'm trying to finish a website right now just for my books. Seems like it's taken me months and months. I can't seem to get it to the finish line. And I said one day to a friend, I really need help with the website. And he grunted and took me down another path. He didn't want to talk to me about my trouble. And I realized pretty quick that he needed a listener. He didn't need a patient. And I was in the patient mood. I said, I really need help on my website. I can't get, I've got hundreds of books I'm trying to get on a website with details in their table of contents on them and things that's inside the book so people will know what they're buying. I don't want just, this is $10, that's $5. I was, but as good of friends as we are, he didn't want to hear about my struggle. Well, that's a different kind of friend. That's a different kind of relationship. The patient feels different toward the doctor than the doctor feels toward the patient. One of the worst days of my life was when I had my last MRI. I want to make up a word for that. It was horrible. Thought I would die. Couldn't talk. But they told us on the phone that they would need 500 cash, that my three insurance companies was not the insurance they would take. I had to give them cash. So I walked slowly and sat down in the corner of one of my team. Came back to me after going to the, you know, the desk, the receptionist of the doctor. Said they need 3,700 cash. It's not $500 like they said on the phone. It's 3,700 cash. Oh, what does that mean? Relationships change. Expectations change. Never believe day one with any relationship. Never believe your experience with anybody on your first day. Nobody is ever as they first appear. Nobody stays the way you wish they would stay. This is my commentary on identifying what relationships bring into your world, bring into your life. Father, I praise you with all my heart for my family my love circle around the world. And Father, I've shared this little wisdom commentary tonight because it's big to me. I misread so many friendships. I misread them. Some that love us when we're well distance themselves when we're sick. Some relationships want what's in their hand. Some want what's in their head. Some want what's in their heart. Some want what's in their bank account. Help us to identify the truth of 
but every relationship, our brothers, our sisters, our kinfolks, people on our job, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to share a couple of things with you before we part. Brazil, Canada, Ghana, Nigeria, Spain, Uganda, UK, Renee, yay, Valerie Alex. Valerie's a, Valerie and Bill's been in my home. Fabulous people. Bill's involved with my favorite Basketball team, the Boston Celtics. Georgia Thomas, Teresa Taylor, Don Gatlin. Did you write Don's son's number down? I want to, I forgot it was Guthrie or Coleman, but if you could find his son, Michael Gatlin, and Don, make sure we have his. Keep, thank you, Don, for that very much, very much. Jacques Maber, quote, so thankful for your calling, Dr. Murdoch. My life is forever changed, end quote. Prophet Joshua Holmes, yay. Wow, look at you, Dad, just beautiful. Your wisdom is mighty. Love my king. Son, those 15 shirts you bought me are gorgeous. I'm going to Look kingly, probably every day now for a while. Thank you with my heart and your note and your blessing. Can't say enough. Janet Baxter. Thank you, Janet. Lou, L-U-E, Fabrique, F-A-B-R-I-Q-U-E. Thanks for praying on your call. It was just much needed. The Lord uses you to just speak the right words. Lou, that prayer was heavy in my spirit on the phone call. Laurel Jones, Stuart McCall, Bricia, Jerry Jones, yay, Jerry. Jerry said, thanks for the phone tree. Steve, Brother Mike, looking good today, tonight. My 19-year-old son, Gwen, was deeply impacted at your birthday celebration. Gwen is on fire for God, reading your books. I have deep gratitude for you and your spirit. Cindy Jones, quote, I loved and needed the phone tree. I have finished editing your book. Why are you silent? At the end of you said the prayer, I wish I could make this in a book. It's your Skylark, my mother's car. Print and mail. Yes, please send it to me, Cindy. Susan Lord, Pastor Arturo said this time is the best of the day. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Arturo. He's Pastor Anna Sweet's husband from Peru. Doesn't have a lazy bone in him, let me tell you. That man can work day and night, and I value that. Laurel Jones says, since starting the mentorship room, that's what we call this time together often, in June of 2021, my blessings are overflowing. I left my focus for a while. When I walked away from this teaching, the distractions come. I'm glad to be here. Laurel Jones, boy, I, may, I love those words. Stay with me for a few minutes. There's been 12 levels of sowing seeds to the kingdom of God that I've seen traceable, visible, testimonial reactions from God. I sent a church a thousand a month for 10 months called, oh, what was it? Miracle Center. Miracle. Miracle Center. Miracle Faith Center. Pastor, can't his mind just, his name just get my mind. 
Alvin Jones and his wife got a divorce later. And Alvin's fabulous. In fact, it was my recommendation that made him a lot of money. Got to brag on myself. He knew so much about radio. I said, why don't you rent your mind out? Rent your mind. He said, what do you mean? I said, like, uh, Akron, Ohio, preacher there. I said he rented his mind for 50000 to a bank in New York. He was so genius in this. And I said, you know so much about radio. Why don't you go to, like NBC, National Religion, and we're broadcasting people, and rent your mind. And they bought it for 250000 a year. That was probably 20 years ago. Because you can rent. You don't have to sell everything you have. You can rent it out. You can rent your mind. I've given them 1000 a month for 10 months on their new church. And I'm sitting there on Sunday morning, and the Holy Spirit whispers to me during the tithe and offerings, how many kinds of blessings are there in my word? And I quickly reached and got my blessing Bible because I'd gone through the Bible four times to find the blessing scriptures and I made a Bible out of it called the blessing Bible because I didn't want to read all the cursed things for wicked people because all the Bible wasn't written for me. Some of the Bible is written for rebels, protocol, uh, prodigals. Some of the Bible is written for evil people. Well, I'm not evil. I love God. want to serve him. So some of the Bible's not for me. Some of the Bible's warning to the people I know about. And I says, let me see. And I counted. There was 58 kinds of blessings. Job, health, children. 58 kinds of blessings in the Bible. So I said to the Holy Spirit, there's 58. He said, write a check to Miracle Faith Center for $58. So I did. I remember thinking, boy, they're going to think I'm nuts. They got $1,000 a month, and suddenly they're getting 58 Mike must go gone broke here. Then the Holy Spirit says, write a second one for your son Jason. Now, very aware of assigning a seed for someone else. I, know, I understand that. So I wrote Jason. I'd spent and lost $50,000 on two child custody cases. 50,000. Couldn't get Jason. And within about two months or so, I land, after I wrote my $58 check and wrote Jason's name on it, I land at the Dallas Fort Worth Airport and my secretary says, Jason will be here in one hour. I said, what's wrong? She said, nothing. His mother's just decided he can come spend the rest of his life with so I started writing $58 checks. That was th that's the smallest check that the Holy Spirit ever told me to write in my lifetime, the littlest one. I go to Houston. I tell the people, the Lord said, tell the people about it. I thought, they're going to think I'm crazy. A little $58 seat talk. The Lord said, tell them. Man comes running up. He says, I hope this thing works. I said, why? He says, I get evicted if I don't come up with $745 by Wednesday. And I have four kids. I think he had four or five. He said, if I don't come up seven, I get evicted from my house. I said, did you write that on your $58 check? He said, yes. I said, well, then let's believe God for that. You gave your seed assignment which Joel Roberts says was the greatest secret in his whole lifetime, is sowing a specific seed for a desired result. By the way, he's the only one I ever heard emphasize that. I heard one other man discuss it. Sowing a seed for a specific result. And within 10 minutes, the man was running back inside that building, that church. I wish you could remember the name. Ran back inside the building, shouting to everybody, it works, 
It works. It works. He was starting his car, and a woman walked by outside in the church parking lot and knocked on his door, his window, rather, his window, and he rolled down the window and said, Yes, ma'am. She said, Are you asking God for something specific? He said, Yes. I have to have $745 by Wednesday or get evicted from my home. She said, When I walked by your car, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Write him a check for whatever he's needing. And she wrote him a check for $745. <laughs> Father, I ask you for 20 phone calls in the next 24 hours for $58. Somebody will write it out of their business as well. There's one preacher tonight that if he'll write it out of his church, he will see within 58 days, he will see two to five new supporters come to his church. There's a pastor, a preacher, watching me tonight that if he will write a seed within 24 hours for $58, he will see a change. There will be two or three people that will start tithing to his church. If he will wrap faith around that $58 seed. There is a lady watching me tonight that has a granddaughter that's in trouble. I don't know if it's health or school or learning or what, but there's a lady watching me that has a granddaughter in trouble. If she'll plant that $58 seed and write her granddaughter's name on the check within 58 days, actually within about 20 days, there will be a radical change in her granddaughter. Father, I say that by the Spirit. I don't say that because I'm hungry for a $58 seed. I say that because that's what the picture you're showing me. In Jesus' name, amen. When you write me, ask for the book, The Wisdom Commentary, Volume 3. I don't know the number of it. All my books have numbers, but I can't seem to find. Ah, you did it. Book 228. There it is. There it is. Book 228. I'm going to send you this book. Actually, actually, I want to send two books. I want to send the Wisdom Commentary, Volume 2, also. I want to send both of these books. Call it uh, 58 Double Blessing. That'll be what you ask for. I'll inform my call center, my prayer center people to expect your phone call. The number to call is 844-789-SEED, which is 7333. The number's on the screen. I think Pastor Anna may join us in a moment. She's been teaching at the Wisdom Center. Covenant 58, double blessing. If you'll say that phrase, double blessing, I'm going to send you both of these books as long as they last. If I run out, I can't. I'll make up for it some way. There's two books. Wisdom Commentary, Volume 2 and Volume 3. Out of this world. Each one has 52 topics that I address of my highest thoughts about that topic. 20 facts about the weapon of forgetting. Remember Joseph's two sons? The first he named Manasseh because he said, God helps me to forget. That's what the word Manasseh means. He named the second son Ephraim because Ephraim means abundance, to be blessed, prosperous. And uh, these two books are my gifts to my $58 seat source. Pastor Anna, are you alive? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm alive. Yay. Yay, yay. I'm glad you made it. I know you've been teaching. What did you teach on? 
I had on Psalm 23, Dr. Murdoch. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I will never lack for anything. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I just did some commentary on different about the difference in friendships, the difference in investing in friendships. Mm -hmm. Some friendships are one-sided. There's a reacher. Some, they're just a receiver. But you must identify, you must identify the cost of every friendship. Some cost little and produce much. I've been sharing on that. Uh, Dr. Murdoch? Yes. Can I share a testimony with you? Please do. The reason why I'm late is because a precious man from California Does it need a place to sleep tonight? <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, sir. Oh. Precious man of God. Originally, he is, uh, I believe, from the Philippines. But his testimony, Dr. Murdoch, is so powerful. He said the first time he sold $1,000 into your life, you prayed over him uh, here at the Wisdom Center, and you told him he would receive a hundredfold return. When he went back home, he got a call from his insurance and received $100,000. <laughs> and he came and he said, I've got to sow a seed into Dr. Murdoch today. So we made sure that he received your 500 books. And he was elated. Uh, we have his information, his picture. But it was a powerful testimony, Dr. Murdoch. Yeah, I've been wanting to put a, a picture a picture prayer book together of the thousand dollar seed sores to stay connected to see what happens in their life. Wow. I want this is kind of a confirmation. Mm. I'm really been wanting to put together thousand dollar seeds big. A lot of people don't think it but it's big. When I sowed my first thousand dollar seed, Pastor Anna I didn't even have a kitchen table. I didn't have enough money to buy chairs and draperies for my window. $1,000, with two exceptions, the most I had ever given to God at the age of 36, I guess it was. The most I'd ever given, the biggest check with two exceptions, was $100. Hmm. It had never crossed my mind that anybody would ever could ever give a thousand dollars. Could never cross my mind. And most people have heard my testimony, my journey mm. to the world of blessing. Wow! And he he came from California. Yes. You got all his phone number and all that. Yes, sir. I have everything for you. I wanna, I wanna call him. I want to call him. I want to pray over that with him on the phone. Mm -hmm. And if you got his, I'd like to keep a, another 12-month record of him just to see what happens. God gave him 100000 through an insurance company. Yes, Dr. Murdoch. Let me pray. Let me pray for 12. I want to mm -hmm. pray for 12 who are listening tonight to me. Yes. That in the next 90 days, God would give you a $1,000 seed to sow. I learned to call in seed way before I learned to call in a harvest. I still don't know how to call in a harvest well. I told Will Roberts there, I said, you're a master at calling in the harvest. And I says, I'm good at sowing quickly when God whispers to me, but I forget all about the harvest. I just have to let go of a seed fast when God speaks. Father, 12 is the number of authority in government. I don't know who the brother is that brought me a $1,000 seed today through the Wisdom Center, Pastor Anna, but I'm really anxious to know him. Yes. <laughs> 
Varra bobo kopri andra soko torabakatra bokoye. I'm anxious to know him, hug his neck, but especially I want to follow the path because the path of the obedient, the path of the obedient is a blessed path. I ask you for 12 people who are watching me right now live. I ask you for 12 people who will hear your voice. I ask you to give them in a miraculous way an extra thousand dollar blessing. Father, if you don't give to us, we don't we can't give. We've got to master receiving so we can sell. So I ask you for twelve people. There's three or four that already have the thousand. They know where it's at. It's in one of their bank accounts. They know that. But there's several of the twelve that would love to sow. Honor them in a spectacular way. I ask you for 12 seeds of $1,000 in the next few hours and days. Your sheep know your voice. Your sheep know your voice. Amen and amen. amen. Ronald, Janet Baxter, Lynn Hater, oh, Lynn, thank you for that. Nigeria's watching. David, I called your name to the Lord today. You sent me a seed. PayPal, I think it was. PayPal. He sent me a seed all the way from Australia. Thank you. From the depths of my heart. I'm going to send to those 12 who sow a $1,000 seed. I'm going to send you two ebook readers. One has a hundred of my best books on prosperity. It's called Millionaire 100. The second ebook reader has 500 of my books in it. You can take those 600 books in, the, in your briefcase. So to the 12 that sow in a thousand, ask for the two ebook readers. I know what you're talking about. Just mention two ebook readers. Those that are sowing a thousand dollar seed. In the next seven days, please mention that. These are my two gifts for the $58 seed. Book 172, and I forget what the other was in. But it's the Wisdom Commentary 2 and Volume 3. Wisdom Commentary 2 and Wisdom Commentary 3. Those two libraries there, what are on this side, this side right here, right between me and Pastor Anna's countenance there, that's 600 books. And it's the way I want to honor and appreciate. Be a thank you to you. Somebody's, somebody's about to have some really good surprises. Yes. Pastor Anna, what are three of your greatest thoughts? I love when you talk about harvest, Dr. Murdoch. Nobody talks and unlocks our faith in what God can do with our seed like you. And I came on fire after hearing that precious testimony of what happens when we sow into your life. And I've shared this before, Dr. Murdoch. It's exciting to sow personal seeds. I believe Praise. that the anointing in your life is flowing upon our lives, Dr. Murdoch. I asked the Lord for 300 to become millionaires with the testimony for God. We have 54 so far of people that have told me face to face, I became a millionaire because of you. I'll never forget. Young black lady, about 30 years old, so too young to be wealthy, but she tapped me on the shoulder. TBN, down in Orlando, Florida. And uh, Jan Crouch had asked me to come speak. And I felt a tap, and I turned around, pretty young lady, and she says, because of you, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> wow. I didn't have the time to stick around to hear the story, but 
I never forgot that tap on my shoulder because of you. I'm a meaner. Got a letter from Bishop Matthew Ashimolowo a couple of days ago. And he called me on the phone. He says, you keep saying about 54 people became a millionaire. He says, Brother Mike, I fly all over the world. And he says, I've never been on a flight yet. Never. This is what he told me. That somebody didn't walk up to me and say, I'm a millionaire today because Mike Murdoch told me about the $1,000 seat. Wow. I will say this. Something happens in your faith when you shift up and say, God, do business with yes. me. Something mm -hmm. really happens in your faith. H.S. Vaughn, I had COVID. I had COVID. Thought I was going to die. I wanted to die. That's why I put the book together called Protected. Book 809. If anybody wants a free copy of it, it's called Protected, book 809. I'll give you a free copy. A free copy. And if you, it's 48 pages. If you want an extra copy for a friend, they're only $5. I'll pay all the shipping and handling. We'll show you how to sow to our ministry here if you want to take screenshot this. Feel free to do so. Here's the book, free copy book 809. Call the book number, 817-759-2665. If you want some extra copies, be great pastors. Be a fabulous gift to your church, a fabulous gift. 817-759-BOOK. If you're calling for prayer, my staff has been answering the phones live today from 12 o'clock to 7 every day, seven days a week, seven hours a day, 12 o'clock noon, Texas time, to 7 o'clock at night. And I hope that you'll call. I hope that you'll plant the seed that the Lord speaks to you about. We value and really need your help. Those from Little Rock, remember tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, I'm on VTN. Every Friday night at 7 o'clock, Little Rock, Arkansas. Don't forget on Monday nights at 6.30, I'm on Word TV every Monday night. Please take advantage of that if you can. Here's some of the ways to sow into our ministry. And uh, Pastor Anna, there is a difference in anointings. Yes. There's a difference in anointings. Benny Hinn asked me to write a book just for his ministry because he said, Brother Mike, the anointing for financial prosperity is on you like healing is for me. Would you please write a book just for my partners? He sent it in over 50 countries of the world. There is a power. Can you shift the screen there? Yes, I want everybody to screenshot this information on the screen, if you will, ways to sow into our ministry. I feel like there's two or three people that want to sow into my personal life. I never got much of a chance to do that to any preacher. I didn't know anything about that. But in the last few weeks, months, people have said, how could I sow? I called Kevin today. Because he said, would you believe he sent me a birthday seed today? Because I just wow. turned 76 years old. Yay. If the Lord speaks that, if the Lord speaks that, we will call you back, acknowledge it, and we'll stay connected. But if this is something the Lord puts in your heart, I want to give you an opportunity. I know the power. I know the power of a financial anointing. Don't you ever trivialize a financial anointing. Anointing, the purpose of money is joy. That's the purpose for money. According to the scriptures, 
financial prosperity is a reaction to obeying a law of God. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, 112th Psalm, Luke 6, 38, 39, 40, Mark 10, 28, 29, and 30, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. Money is a God reaction when you have obeyed a law he's established. Wow. Praise God. Yes. Somebody's about to. <laughs> By next Friday, is that about eight days? Yes, sir. Within eight days, within eight days, there's somebody, there's two, maybe a third person. There's two people. God will confirm the financial anointing has entered your life by a week from tomorrow, within eight days. Wow. Within eight days. Peaches, Vaughn, get ready. COVID was a test zone, and God brought you through it. You're going to see the hand of God. Praise God. Yes. God bless your family. Pastor Anna, give us a closing word before we run our videos to show the people some of my gifts for everybody. Yes. Father, I thank you right now for this incredible opportunity to sow into Dr. Murdoch personally. I thank you, Father, for every $58 seed I thank you for the 12 that are sowing the $1,000 seed. Yes, Father. I thank you today because the harvest is real. Oh, Father, I thank you for the testimonies that are coming yes. to our family around the world. Yes, yes. Thank you that the testimony in Dr. Murdoch's life will be our testimony. That even when he said he sowed 1000 and he had no table for his home. Oh, Father, we thank you because as we make his decisions, we qualify for his testimony. I love that. And yes. we declare that so yes. in Jesus' matchless name. Yes. Amen. So be it. Amen. Amen. Bless your family. We're live here on this Thursday evening. So glad you took the time. Really glad you took the time. Amen. Amen. We're going to run a little video. Lord blessing. We'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock yes. noon tomorrow. Don't fail. Be here with us. Good night. Here's a video. Precious family, I'm so glad you joined us today for the wisdom world of Mike Murdoch. I have a great pack to present to you that you're going to love. Dr. Murdoch says, if you want to become a millionaire, invest in your mind. These seven books will make you succeed beyond your wildest dreams. The Law of Recognition, Secrets of the Richest Man Who Ever Lived, Seven Decisions That Will Decide Your Financial Wealth, Ten Lies Many People Believe About Money, 31 Reasons People Do Not Receive Their Financial Harvest, 31 Secrets for Career Success, 7 Laws You Must Honor to Have Uncommon Success. Money 7 Pack. Family, order your copy today. The code number is 538-PACK. 538-PACK. And guess what? It's only $29. Can you believe that? Don't miss this great opportunity. For those of you that live around the world, we are not able to ship books outside of the United States, but we do have a wonderful option for you. Please visit our website, thewisdomcenter.tv, button 8, section 1, and you can download your copy today of Money 7 Pack. You will love this opportunity. Please write Dr. Murdoch, the P.O. box on the screen, is for those of you that are sending your testimonies, your words, they matter to him more than you can imagine. Please write him today. God bless you and thank you.
for being a part of this love family.